The surviving suspect in the deadly Boston Marathon bombings is still in the hospital, reportedly in serious condition. Doctors say he is sedated and still unable to speak. This morning, Massachusetts authorities released new video from state police. It shows the boat where one of the suspects, the younger 19-year-old Johar Zarnayev, finally surrendered to police Friday night. The thermal images, as you see, very graphic. They show the suspect curled up in the boat. The image of the boat and the yard appear white. The dark figure there, of course, is the suspect in the vessel. Police used the video to figure out where he was as they were trying to decide how to get him out. In the Watertown home, the homeowner had noticed a strap cut on his boat and saw some blood. So he called police, and the final gun battle with the suspect ended with his surrender late Friday night. His family has since been speaking out, saying they're thankful that he is alive. I'm relieved that he's alive. Um, first of all, for that there's now a chance to find out who was behind of it. And second of all, I stress that there's a chance for Jahar again to seek forgiveness. So that is the uncle of the suspects, the two suspect brothers. Uh, the older Tamerlan did not survive the getaway. Jahar is expected to be questioned as soon as he's able to respond. This morning, we are left with a lot of questions about these suspects, including what could have driven them to do this, the motive, and could this act of terror have been prevented in ways, maybe perhaps by better security? We'll be asking that for future events, even for those here in Houston. So KTRK security analyst Jim Conway joins us this morning to talk more about this. And let's talk first about the investigation and where it goes next. They must have a massive amount of evidence and, of course, locations to look for more information now. Sure. The investigation at this point is really two-pronged. I mean, in terms of putting together the evidence for the ensuing case against him, the trial against him, that's a slam dunk. That's not really the focus. The focus right now is public safety. They want to debrief him. They want to debrief the people around him. They want to go into his chat rooms, his email, his texts. They want to talk to those people. They want to look and see if there's a greater conspiracy, if there's some indication of public safety or another terrorist threat somewhere in Washington, D.C., and Los Angeles that he may be linked to. That's the focus right now. You make an interesting point. Do you believe they will wait to give him his Miranda rights? Well, there is a public safety e exception under the Patriot Act uh, that... That, uh, that gives the FBI and the intelligence community the ability not to give people Miranda rights. Now, there's some, there's some contingencies there. That interview cannot go beyond the scope of determining if there is a public safety issue. They cannot ask him specific questions about his guilt or, or innocence. But yes, there is an opportunity, and I have actually done that myself. You know, ABC News has been reporting that the older suspect, Jahar's older brother, Tamerlan, mm -hmm. uh, was in Russia last year, that the FBI had looked into his background in 2011 on behalf of a foreign gov government, mm -hmm. and that uh, the foreign government claiming that he has a follower, of a follower of radical Islam. What can we make of that information so far? Well, you know, this is something that's percolating up, and I can see that this is going to become a large criticism of the FBI and the intelligence community in the coming days. But understand that the FBI receives hundreds or literally thousands of these referrals every year. And we are mandated or we are under certain rules by Congress to, to take a look at these things. But in the spirit of privacy rights and constitutional rights and so forth, we can only take somewhat of a look at these things. We scrub them, we look at them, we do interviews, we do some background, and if we determine, as the FBI probably determined two years ago, there was not a specific threat there, the investigation is then closed. Let's move on and talk about security a little bit. When we mm -hmm. talked with you earlier this week, you said that uh, an event like a marathon, a staged event, it's not a soft target like perhaps a mall or a movie theater. Mm -hmm. It's a hard target. There were security sweeps. Absolutely. What else can you do? Look, you know, we don't live in a perfect world. It, you know, it's, it's kind of a blend. It's, it's a hard target in many ways because there's a lot of uh, bomb dogs in the area. There's a lot of surveillance. There's a lot of uh, eyes and ears on the, on the threat location, so to speak. In a certain way, it's a soft target, too, because there's literally, there were a half a million people in downtown Boston that day uh, participating in the event of the Boston Marathon. So it's tough. This is a hard target. You know, when you've got young people being, um, pursuing jihad on the Internet and not being actually directed, but being inspired through chat rooms, through the Internet, which I think is going to be the phenomenon and what we're sort of leaning toward right now, but all that will come out in, in the ensuing weeks and months. This is a tough target. This is tough. I mean, and you can't make every single event absolutely safe. 
we've done a pretty good job. We've thwarted over 50 uh, terrorism attacks in the United States in the past, since 9-11. But you know what? Once in a while, one's going to get through, unfortunately. All right. We'll continue to check back with you for your insight as the investigation develops. Thank you, Jim. Thank you.